This is one of sport's great proving grounds, a gateway to glory. Brilliant. 30 tournaments spanning 19 countries. Along the way, a chance to expand horizons and sample life on tour. Whoa, what are you doing? Finish the season in the top 20 on the road to Mallorca rankings and secure a golden ticket to the DP World Tour. This is the Challenge Tour. So far on our South African swing, we got up close and personal with one of the big five. To see places like this, it's kind of what you need to do. You need to go see the world. And crowned a champion in the bush. And the perfect start to the 2024 Road to Mallorca. Reached new heights in the mother city. Spots like this is just amazing. It gives you energy. And welcomed a familiar face back into the winner's circle. What a way to win your second title on the Challenge Tour. Mikael Lindbergh, the 31-year-old, is the Baines Whiskey Cape Town Open champion. It was game, set and match on the garden route. Oh, that's off the side. <laughs> oh, come on. And we etched a new name onto an iconic trophy. David Rivetto was the 2024 Dimension Data Pro-Am champion. And so to the final chapter of our South African story, event number four in the Rainbow Nation, the NMB Championship. A new week and new possibilities ahead for the class of 2024 as they tackle South Africa's only true Lynx course at Humewood Golf Club. Up for the challenge, a fresh-faced youngster from a country not known for producing professional golfers. Is that like action or something? My name is Gianluca Stiren. I come from Slovenia, I'm 26 years old. I've been playing golf for 24 years and this is my first year on the Challenge Tour. Slovenia is already a small country and we only have about seven golf courses. So as you can imagine, there's also not very many players. It's growing, but it's, it's definitely not one of the main sports. I came here via Pro Golf Tour. So last year was my second year playing on the Pro Golf Tour, where I, last year I got my two victories there and I ultimately finished in the top five, which granted me a 12B category here on the Challenge Tour for this year. The Pro Golf Tour is one of four official satellite tours, providing a gateway to the Challenge Tour through its order of merit. It's a pathway walked by many before, including Marcel Seem, a pro golf and challenge tour graduate who's gone on to win five times on the DP World Tour. It's exciting. I've played a lot of amateur golf before and I was in, at Arkansas State playing collegiate golf for five years. And there's a lot of players here that I have either played with or against in college or in my amateur years. So I already know a few guys and I'm sure I'm gonna get to know a lot more guys along the season. Yo, what's up? That's a familiar swing. Hey, how's how it going? You? Good, yeah. Well, there we go. We're uh, here on the challenge tour now. Is your yeah. first event? No? Yes, yeah, first, first event this year. And you? Uh, first one as well, yeah. Nice. So, how do you like it here? It's great. A little, win a little windy. Yeah, a little uh, bit. Just a little bit. But no, it's, it's awesome. How's your golf game right now? You ready? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you feeling good? Yeah, feeling good, yeah. I'm just ready to get the season going again. Yeah, yeah. Get it's back time. to competing and... It's time for play some tournaments. Yeah. What's up, Jules? Oh, uh, hey, Zia. How's it? It's been a while. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Good, good. Challenger last year, I saw yeah. that was what you finished second or third on the upstore? Was it? Uh, two years ago, yeah, I finished second on upstore. So, I played last year, my first year as a pro on Challenge Tour. What would you say? It was pretty good, experience. yeah, it was a good, good experience coming from a half store. Mm -hmm. And first year as a pro on Challenge Tour, pretty good, finished fifth year. So, That's awesome. we improved the category a bit. I saw you, you played really well last year, congrats. We met, um, we actually went to school together in the US, we went to Arkansas State University. 
So I got there my junior year because I went to previous school, different school before. And we spent the last three years together like that, uh, like junior, senior, and then one extra with COVID, the COVID year. So we were roommates, we were in the same apartment, so we know each other for pretty good like that. All right, Z, I'm going to head hey. out. Sounds good. Play well this week. Good luck. Best good luck. luck. Have fun. <laughs> For Stiren, seeing old friends and former teammates has brought about much needed familiarity. But having his father on the back is also a pretty useful asset for your Challenge Tour debut. It's very special. It's something that, you know, you work all your life towards. And to be here with my dad playing our first Challenge Tour event is, is awesome. Golf is not a sport that you just get into it by, your, you know, by yourself. So there's got to be either a parent or a good friend of yours or somebody that sort of introduces you to the game. And in my case, it was my dad. When he was two years, uh, he started with, uh, with some plastic uh, uh, clubs. Uh, OK, it was a game. But he decided, actually, when he was, uh, I think, 30 years old, he said he, he came to me and said, well, that um, I would like to play golf. It's my life. And since uh, then, he, he actually um, trained um, a lot. I'll stick to golf. It's like um, all other events. Uh, but yeah, Challenge Tour is, uh, of course, especially it was uh, our and his goal for all these years. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, it will be successful. Thank you very much, my son. Thank you. I prefer golf. Yeah. Slovenia. Slovenia. Ah, perfect. And first on the tee, representing Slovenia, Jean Lucas Stern. It didn't take long for him to get into the swing of things. Starting on the 10th hole, he opened with back to back birdies. After another gain on the 15th hole, it must have all seemed rather simple for the 26-year-old. However, he failed to capitalize on the par 5 17th, and an opportunity went to begging here on 18 too. Still, out in 34 blows and three under par, an excellent first nine tally. It wasn't all plain sailing, though as back-to-back -back bogeys on the third and fourth holes threatened to derail his round. Others might have allowed those mistakes to get the better of them. Not Stiren, though. He showed plenty of maturity to bounce back with two more birdies on six and seven. He closed with back-to-back -back pars, signing for an opening three under par 69. It was fantastic. It was everything that I ever you know dreamt of it more it was it was it was great you know especially having my dad on the bag was fantastic and indeed he should be pleased with his efforts three under par good enough for a share of 54th place some way off the pace though set early on by martin couvre a sensational start for the young frenchman with a first round 61 the question now with scoring so good would Stiren be able to shift gear and card a really low one in round two. There we go, getting ready for round two. Not too windy right now, but I think it'll get pretty hectic here in a couple hours, so it should be interesting. And with that, Stiren was off. He signaled his intentions early on with a fine approach to the first, the birdie duly converted, the Slovenian one under after one and four under for the tournament. Things cooled slightly thereafter, patience required as five pars followed. He reeled off another birdie on the par five seventh hole and hit one close here on nine. 
Delightful iron play from Stiren. The birdie took him to three under for the day, six under in total, and now very much in the hunt as he strode towards the tenth hole. He added another red number to the card at the par 5 11th, but ran into trouble on 13. A double bogey brought Sturin crashing down to earth again. A pivotal moment, but much like round one where he had to overcome adversity, he was more than up to the challenge. He birded the 15th and 17th holes to erase the mistake made on 13. Then came a grandstand finish, with this long-range effort finding the bottom of the cup. Seven birdies and one double drop then in a round of 67, two better than a day before. Not only a first cut made for Stiren, but at eight under par and tied 17th, he was also in with a shout heading into the weekend. You know, obviously, you come here wanting to do good and then to actually do it and, and to shoot low numbers and then ultimately to make the cut is fantastic. Looking forward to the weekend for sure. Don't go anywhere, as after the break, we take to the skies with Kyle Barker. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Magic, guys. And we'll see who'll clinch the final trophy of our South African swing. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Challenge Tour. We're on the east coast of the Rainbow Nation for the final event of our South African swing, the NMB Championship. It's a stunning stretch of coastline, and there's surely no better way to take it all in than from the air. I'll take any opportunity that I can get to go have a bit of fun, um, get some adrenaline pumping. I'm a little bit nervous to go in the heli. I've been in one before. Heights do get the better of me, but uh, I'll get over it. How's the cup? Mark, nice to meet you. Kyle nice will be your pilot this evening. Thank you We've got much. some uh, beautiful weather for a, a lovely flight, and I'm looking forward to taking you to the golf course. Oh, lovely. I absolutely can't wait. <laughs> Look at 
That was insane. I can't believe it. That was the most amazing thing I've ever done, really. And the views from up there was just, you know, to have another, a different perspective on, on where we are and, uh, you know, for this week's tournament. Wow, we're so lucky to be here. Time to hit some balls. Uh, I hope my caddy brought the right clubs. This is definitely the best uh, wedge game uh, session I've ever had. I think I've almost holed a few shots there, so I'm going to make sure my caddy gives me the right club to this exact yardage and I'll hit it in. Get in the hole! <laughs> Definitely, this is uh, going to put me in the best mood um, for this week. I feel so relaxed and so excited for this wonderful tournament. That was awesome. Let's head back now. Yes, the experience of a lifetime, something Barker surely won't forget in a hurry. Back on terra firma now, and back to the NMB Championship. Two rounds in, there were two tied at the top in Keenan Davitzer and Bjorn Orkerson. Jonathan Caldwell was lurking just one off the pace, with 18 hole leader Martin Kuvra a further shot back in a tie for fourth. The strong winds that were forecast for the weekend arrived in full force on Saturday morning, as only 15 golfers were able to get their rounds underway before play was suspended. A delay of almost six and a half hours meant the league group would only tee off just after six o'clock local time. And the third round would almost certainly run into Sunday. So taking us through the limited action, Kit Alexander. First round leader, Martin Kuvra, was looking to kick on over the weekend. And the 21-year-old Frenchman hit this beautiful approach at the first. He would convert for the birdie to move to 13 under par. The vastly experienced Lee Slattery using that experience with this nifty little bump and run here at the seventh. That would set up a birdie for the two-time DP World Tour winner. Unfortunately, fading light eventually brought about an end to proceedings, with the lead group only through four holes. Lee Slattery had moved into a share of the lead, along with Hayden Hopewell and Jonathan Caldwell, with Orkerson and Kuvra a further shot back. Play was scheduled to resume early on Sunday morning for the conclusion of the third round, with the final 18 holes set to take place immediately thereafter. But all of this was dependent on the elements. The final day dawned with conditions slightly better, far from calm, but at least playable, as the field made their way back into position to resume round three. Bjorn Orkerson just seen Keenan Davidser, his playing partner, birdie the seventh, and he followed suit to join Kuvra and Hopewell in the lead. Lee Slattery was making a great run, eagle at 11, a birdie at 12, and driver off the deck for his second shot here at 13. That tells you just how windy it was, but what a stunner. And the Englishman would convert this left to righter for a superb birdie to take the outright lead at minus 18. The Aussie Hopewell had started well. He was a couple under through the first eight, birdied nine as well, but gave one back at 13. This, a brilliant response. The Eagle at 15. 
He was right in contention in the strengthening breeze. Orkerson for his birdie at 15. And that moved him back into a share alongside Lee Slattery. Unfortunately for Slattery, he bogeyed 17, coupled with an Orkerson birdie at 16. He was two behind playing the last. He did make this for par, and that posted the clubhouse lead and the target of 17 under par. Well, Orkerson was in trouble at the final hole, tugged his tee shot into the trees. So this is fourth shot. A nice one, but it left work to do just for a bogey. He would roll it in, though, for a third round of 68. And that would set him at 18 under par in the clubhouse. One ahead with one round to go. But that wind was getting stronger. Yes, the wind had indeed picked up significantly throughout the morning. And by the time the third round was completed, it was borderline unplayable. Play was suspended again, and with time running out and conditions not improving, a difficult decision had to be made. Round four was cancelled, and the tournament decided over 54 holes. Leaving Bjorn Orkerson as the champion. Orkerson finished one shot clear of Englishman Lee Slattery, Hayden Hopewell securing solo third place, with 18-hole leader Martin Kuvra a further shot back in fourth. Incidentally, you'll recall our Slovenian new boy Jan Lukas Stieren from earlier. Well, he finished tied 36th. But it was another Swedish success story, a second victory in the past three weeks on South African soil. It's amazing. Um took my first win on Challenge Tour and uh, hasn't really sunk in yet. To get a win here on Challenge Tour, my first win will uh, absolutely give me more confidence on the golf course. So following the conclusion of our South African swing, it's Mikael Lindbergh who leads the way on the road to Mallorca rankings. The Swede assumed top spot with his victory in Cape Town and hasn't let go. A good week in the Windy City sees Hayden Hopewell up to 13th, while Jonathan Caldwell also made the most of a solid showing. And Englishman George Bloor is sitting in the pivotal 20th position. And with that, our time in South Africa has come to an end. It's been a sensational start to the new season, but there's still more to come along the road to Mallorca. There's now a two-week respite for the class of 2024. Before, it all begins again with back-to-back -back events in India. So join us next time as the pursuit of promotion to the DP World Tour continues.